You've inspected and measured your parts for wear, so now let's reassemble the engine. Always use new gaskets, filters, and oil, and check your Kohler service manual for assembly procedures and measurement specs. If you remove the pistons and connecting rods during disassembly, reinstall them. Consult the Kohler factory service manual for more detailed information. Lay the oil pan flat on the bench. Begin assembly by installing the oil pump screen into the screen grooves in the pan. Install the screen with the open side down. Install the pressure relief ball and the spring. Add a light film of fresh motor oil to the oil pump rotor bore and the outer pump rotor assembly. Install the pump cover and the three T25 retaining screws. Check your service manual for the correct screw torque. Lightly coat the tappets with motor oil and install them in the correct bore locations you identified during disassembly. Position the crankshaft so the timing mark on the crank gear is at 12 o'clock. Lightly oil the camshaft bearing surfaces and cam lobes. Carefully install the camshaft into the crankcase. Align the timing mark on the camshaft with the timing mark on the crank gear. Wipe any excess oil from the gasket mating surface of the crankcase. Install the oil pan gasket to the crankcase and alignment dowels. Install two O-rings on the transfer ports. Add a light film of oil to the oil pan's main bearing surface and the crankshaft's bearing surface. Carefully lower the oil pan into position on the crankcase. Don't forget the oil pump gears need to mesh with the crankcase gear during this process. You can slowly rotate or rock the crankshaft back and forth to help align the gears. When the gears align, the cover settles into position with little effort. Remember, using the bolts to pull a pan into position can cause damage. Install the 12 10 mm oil pan bolts using the torque specs and sequences shown in your service manual. Once the bolts are torqued to specs, invert the engine to the flywheel side up position. Now it's time to install the cylinder head. Kohler's unique design uses two spark plugs to provide a clean, efficient burn in the cylinder. The flame travels faster so there's less spark advance. First install a new cylinder head gasket onto the two dowels of the cylinder head mounting surface. Install the cylinder head on the same dowels and thread the cylinder head bolts into the block. Torque the head bolts in the recommended sequence to the recommended specs. Install the pushrod guide plates by installing the rocker arm stud through the plate and into the cylinder head. The stud's coarse threads go into the cylinder head. The fine threads are for the rocker arm adjusting nuts. Add a light film of motor oil to the tips of the push rods, the rocker arms, and the adjusters. Loosely assemble them to the rocker arm studs. Be sure they're placed in the same location as when you remove them by using the identifying marks you made during disassembly. Use a flashlight to make sure the tip of the push rod is installed into the end of the tappets and not the oil return hole. What you don't want to do is drop the push rod into the crankcase. Repeat the same procedure for the other cylinder head and components. Remember, add a light film of oil in all critical points and use a flashlight to check that the push rod is in the end of the tappet. Install the rocker arms just tight enough to retain the push rods. Next, install the breather assembly component. The filter, the breather reed and backplate assembly, and the gasket and cover. Install the five T25 torque screws and torque to the specs listed in your service manual. Be sure to install the cover gasket in the correct orientation, with the ribs of the gasket meeting the casting ribs of the breather chamber. Reinstall the valley baffles using the three 8mm screws. Install the O2 sensor on the valley of the number one cylinder screw. Install the harness and stator assembly onto the crankcase. Check the routing of the wiring harness closely to be sure the harness is retained in the baffle clips so that there's no harness contact with the flywheel. The stator mounting screws are treated with sealant to eliminate potential leaks due to porosity. If needed, add a light film of sealant prior to reassembly. 
inspect the harness and speed sensor lead. You want to be sure the lead is not too tight when assembled. Reattach the harness ground wire to the T25 baffle screw. Be sure the ground wire terminal on the block and baffle surfaces are clean to ensure a good ground connection. Connect the oil sensor wires onto the pressure and temp connectors. Slide the number two cylinder crankcase baffle over the two T25 screws using the slotted holes in the baffle. Install the remaining two T25 screws through the baffle into the crankcase. Torque to the recommended specs. Install the number two cylinder outer baffle using the three eight mm screws and torque to specs. With the flywheel key installed, clean the inner flywheel taper and crankshaft taper with an alcohol-based cleaner such as brake cleaner. It's very important to remove any impurities or oil residue from these tapered surfaces before mating them together. The heavy flywheel is easier to manipulate if you use a flywheel puller as a handle to install it onto the crankshaft. Torque to the recommended specs. Install the speed sensor using one T25 torque screw. Make sure the center locking set screws are backed out enough so that there's no contact between the set screw and the end of the rocker arm studs. Once the push rods are lightly retained, rotate the engine crankshaft by hand to establish top dead center of the compression stroke for cylinder number one. Check compression through the spark plug hole. Air will escape when the piston moves to the top of the cylinder. If the rocker arms are still moving when top dead center is achieved, rotate the crankshaft one full revolution. Once top dead center on the compression stroke is achieved, there will be no rocker arm movement when you rock the crankshaft back and forth. Using the correct feeler gauge found in your service manual, install the feeler gauge between the number one valve tip and the rocker arm. Turn the adjusting nut until you feel a slight drag. Hold the adjusting nut in position and use a Torx driver to tighten the set screw clockwise, securing it into position. Now recheck the valve lash clearance. You might need to readjust it to the correct valve lash setting as noted in your service manual. Make sure to back off the set screw before readjusting the rocker arm adjustment nut. Repeat the valve lash adjusting procedure on the other cylinder. When viewing from the flywheel side of the engine, rotate the flywheel crankshaft three quarters of a turn or 270 degrees clockwise. The second cylinder should be at top dead center on the compression stroke. Using the same procedure, adjust the valve lash on the second cylinder. Once you achieve and retain the correct valve lash, rotate the crankshaft to make sure there's no binding. If it's not correctly adjusted, you may get binding between the valve spring coils on at full lift, and bending of the push rods could occur. Slowly rotate the crankshaft two full revolutions to check the engine for proper operation. There should be no binding when you rotate the crankshaft. Using new gaskets and five eight mm screws, Reinstall the rocker arm covers. Install the spark plug wire J-clip on the screw closest to the intake port. Torque the screws to specs found in your service manual. Set the flywheel fan pins onto the non-threaded holes in the top of the flywheel. The ECU and regulator mounting plate both help to maintain a robust electrical ground. The plate eliminates the need for separate ground wires or tabs. Kohler now uses brass inserts instead of the earlier method of securing screws into plastic. This makes for a very robust fastening joint. The blower housing also has cleanouts that help the cleaning process in dirty operating environments. Install the blower housing and dipstick assembly with three 8mm screws and two 10mm nuts. Again, torque to the proper specs. If equipped, Install the oil cooler, inserting the tubes into the hoses. Fasten the cooler with two 8mm screws. Secure the hose clamps on the cooler hoses. With the spring washers attached, slip the four fan spacers into the fan. 
Four screws and washers slide through the chopper screen, then through a supporting ring. Some engines are equipped with two rings. Then insert them through the tall fan spacers and thread them into the flywheel. Install Loctite 242 and tighten to the specified torque, staggering the pattern between the four screws. Install the stationary screen onto the top of the blower housing. To install the starter, slide the nose under the ground bracket assembly of the ECU and voltage regulator. Use two 10 mm bolts and torque to the recommended specs. Connect the gray and black ECU plug and voltage regulator plug. Reconnect the wires on the starter solenoid. Install the fuel pump baffle to the crankcase with three 10 mm screws. Install the fuel pump module to the baffle with three 8 mm screws. Torque all screws to the recommended specs. Connect the fuel pump module wire, the yellow plug, to the top of the fuel pump module. Carefully place the intake manifold assembly in position. Be sure the valley bracket is behind the wiring harness. Loosely install the two 8mm and one 10mm bracket screws. Leaving the valley bracket screws loose, carefully slide the intake manifold gaskets into place between the intake port of the cylinder heads in the intake manifold. Install four T40 intake mounting bolts. Tighten them to the recommended specs. Stagger the pattern between the four bolts as noted in your manual. The valley bracket screws must remain loose while you torque the intake manifold. Once the bolts are tight, tighten the valley bracket screws to the proper torque. Route the ignition coil fuel injector and throttle position sensor wires behind the large air intake hose. Route the short leads to cylinder number one. Route the longer leads behind the throttle body and attach them to the injector and coil on cylinder number two. Then attach the throttle position sensor. Route the large wiring harness over the intake air hose. Secure the wires with a J-clip. If the engine is equipped with an electronic governor, route the digital linear actuator wire behind the throttle body and connect it to the DLA plug. Attach the harness to the governor control unit. Connect the T-map and fuses and snap the diagnostic connector retainer into the bracket assembly. Reattach the breather hose to the air intake elbow and retain it with a spring clamp. Make sure there are no kinks in the breather hose. Connect the vent line and the high pressure fuel lines to the top of the fuel pump module. Attach the pulse line and the fuel lines to the impulse fuel pump. Slide the spring clamps back into position on the fuel lines. Install the four hoses into the retaining bracket and mount to the blower housing with a 10 mm nut. Install the spark plugs and attach the spark plug wires using the two J clips and the molded wire clips on the blower housing. That's it. Remember, you can find your service manual, parts lookup, and genuine Kohler service parts at KohlerEngines.com.